This is a hole in a piece of cast iron that receives a pin that's part of a hinge system. The problem is it broke off. And this creates a number of unique problems because this is a piece of antique equipment and there's a lot of uh, hand-painted filigree on the underside that you can't see that would be destroyed if I brazed or welded this back together. So I had to come up with a different solution and that solution was to use one of the many steel epoxies available to try to fix this. The first step was to use a Dremel tool fitted with a wire brush to clean off all of the enamel and make sure that I was down to bare metal in all areas. The problem is, is this actually polished the metal so it was nice and shiny. It was clean, but for epoxies, you don't want it shiny. You want a rough surface so that they have some roughness, some texture to grab onto. What I then did is I used an X-Acto knife to score the cast iron in a crosshatch pattern. Now, cast iron is very hard, but it's no match for the hardness of an X-Acto blade. And this scored it quite well and uh, provided a lot of uh, gripping surface for the epoxy to come. The next issue was which epoxy to use. Fortunately, there are many tests on YouTube and the internet, and they all seem to conclude that the JB Weld original formula is about the strongest metal epoxy you can find. So I decided to go with this. If you want to see one of these epoxy comparisons for yourself, you can't do any better than the excellent video, Ultimate Epoxy Competition, published by the Project Farm YouTube channel. As strong as JB Weld is supposed to be, I wasn't confident it was going to be strong enough by itself to hold this joint considering the stresses it was under. So what I did is I took a drill bit and I drilled two shallow holes through the root and each side like this and then made a brace out of uh, some uh, galvanized wire and uh, it, as strong as JB Weld is this wire even soft steel is still 10 times stronger so this is going to act as a supporting brace this is like the steel rebuyer in uh, steel reinforced concrete. So this is going to take most of the stress. Time to put the JB Weld on. JB Weld is very thick so you don't want to just pour it on. It won't pour anyway. You want to work it into the cracks as much as possible and in my case I want to get it underneath these wires. It's a messy sort of job but hopefully this will pay off. Let's skip forward to the finished job. JB Weld normally cures to a dark gray. It looks almost white here because I've ground it to shape and sanded it for future painting. While JB Weld doesn't give off any unpleasant fumes, I have to say it's pretty nasty stuff to work with once it's mixed. It's sticky, very viscous, but the biggest problem is, is it flows mercilessly. And because it takes up to four hours to set, that flow can be a real problem because if I had just mounded this up in four hours it would have flown off the edge and way out here and I'd end up with a real thin layer. So what I did is used non-stick aluminum foil to create dams to hold it in place. It allowed me to get a single pour with a lot of thickness and I didn't have to worry about all the material flowing away. One of my concerns was that the epoxy was going to flow into the threads of the set screw and lock it in place. What I did is I coated the set screw before I put the epoxy in with a, uh, a liberal layer of oil, screwed it in place, and then let the epoxy flow in on purpose. And it's worked out nice. As you can see, it threads in and out, and the threads of the uh, JB weld uh, will actually strengthen the threads that were left in the uh, cast iron so they'll back each other up. This turned out to be a nice solution and al allowed me to get a greater depth to the JB weld for greater strength. And that's it. All I have to do is put a coat of paint on it to uh, make it match the rest of the frame and see if it holds. And here's the final repair in operation. It's a little hard to see because the black paint I use is a perfect match for the black of the cast iron. But the body is right here. 
the hinge pin is fitting up into it and that is the set screw. The machine this supports weighs about 50 pounds and when the machine is lowered for storage it hangs from this pin so strength is of the utmost importance. And I found that uh, this repair takes that weight perfectly with no problems at all. And in case you're wondering just what machine it was I've been fixing, it is my wife's antique Model 66 Singer sewing machine manufactured, believe it or not, in 1910. So, considering it's been banging around for 107 years, I'm not surprised a piece of the cast iron broke off. I hope you found this video helpful if you have a piece of cast iron you need fixing. And as always, thank you for watching.